Charlton Heston. These are my good friends, Miss Jane Wyman, Mr. Arthur Franz, and Mr. Randolph Scott. Our purpose here is to quote from the Bible, the book of Genesis, chapter 4, verse 9, the Cain and Abel story. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Am I my brother's keeper? The answer the world's religions, almost all 3,000 of them, give to that question is simple. Yes, you are your brother's keeper. Very literally, very definitely, any time, any place, any brother. Yes, I realize how important it is. There's some people here. As a matter of fact, I was just going to tell them about it. All right, thank you. Goodbye. I thought you might be interested in having a look at this United Jewish Appeal pamphlet. There are some pictures in it that'll give you an idea of why... Pardon me. Hello? Hello, Mr. Robinson. You called me? Oh, yes. Well, I just got your message. Yes, well, I uh, want to come down and see you about your contribution to the United Jewish Appeal. You're always asking for money. Yes, I know, but this year is something special. Is it? We'll need... Uh, $250 million for the work in Palestine and Europe and the refugees in the United States. Well, you just have to forget about me. Oh? Yeah, every year it's something special. Don't you ever change your tune? Money, money. You fellas don't seem to know anything except to ask for money. Do you think I'm made of money? Do you think it grows on trees? Where do you get off, anyway? I gave a pile of dough last year, and now you want more. Where do you guys get off? Hasn't anybody told you about conditions? Have you been to a restaurant lately? You know how much they're getting for steaks? It's a good thing you get your check after dinner, otherwise you'd have a tough time digesting your meal. Haven't you heard of inflation? 99 cents a pound for butter. Milk, 23 cents a quart. With prices like that, it's a wonder our kids grow up to be healthy. Wouldn't be so bad if business wasn't falling off on top of everything else. It's getting tougher and tougher to scratch out a living. Oh, you sure picked a great year to ask for more money. Where do you get off? But how can you talk that way when... I'm sorry, Mr. Robinson, but I'm a busy man. I imagine you'd like to know who that was. Well, the name doesn't matter. It might be anyone. Let's be honest. The moment some people are asked for money, they begin to think of dozens of different reasons why they shouldn't give. Like this man I was just talking to. Where do you get off, he says to me. Instead of answering... I like to ask the question, only a little differently. Where do they get off? Where? Once we knew the answer, and it was a grim one. They got off at the gas chambers of Dachau. They got off at the death furnaces of Buchenwald. But where now? Is the train's last stop this, the end of life? Or is it this, the beginning of a new life? There is an answer, and there is a destination. Palestine. But it is no longer a question of simply buying a ticket and walking aboard ship. The fare is high and the currency is heartbreak, suffering and sometimes bitter disappointment. The Mediterranean cruise 1948 model is a miserable echo of the past. Your palatial liner provides you with all the facilities for relaxation. For example, you can join your fellow passengers at the rail watching for flying fish. It is a happy game, and when one is spotted, you scatter gaily below decks to keep it from spotting you. But if it does spot you, your host won't wait for your entrance into port, but it will come out to meet you to be sure you arrive in good hands. Notice the smiles of greeting on their faces. A land of milk and honey. What if the milk is sour and the honey rancid? What if the fare is high? They're willing to pay it. This trip has taken 2,000 years. And when you waited and prayed and dreamed for 2,000 years, what does it matter if it takes a little longer until the milk tastes sweet and the honey pure? The point is that these people are willing to wait for that day, to work for it, to fight for it. But they cannot build this new land without help. The Jews in Palestine are not merely fighting for themselves. They're fighting for you and me. If it is open season on the Jews in Palestine today, what makes you think tomorrow won't be open season on somebody else? Somewhere else. 
Chicago, let's ask ourselves, where do we get off? Ah, eggs, sugar, coffee, real butter, real food. I tell you, honey, we're lucky. You know something, Dan? I've been thinking about it, too. We can let the redecorating go for a while. I'd like to get more on my own. You know that? Hello, Bob Fields. Hello, Bob. I just wanted to tell you that I'd like to take that campaign chairmanship, if it's still open. How come? Oh, I don't know. I slept on it, thought it over. Thought of those millions overseas, waiting behind the Iron Curtain, waiting in the Near East, wondering what the next rap on the door will bring them, hoping that you and I won't forget them. I guess it's as you say, Bob, we just have to do all we can because lives depend on it. And saving lives and helping democracy, that just makes good sense. As a matter of fact, I, I was going to call you, ask you if you wanted to go down to Palm Springs for a few days. Who pays? Me? What kind of a crack is that? Did I ever let you grab all the check? Did I ever let you pay my end? Milt, that's exactly what I have been doing. And I'm getting sick and tired of it. <laughs> What's got into you? I've been paying your bill for years. I've been paying for services given you and your family. I've been carrying part of your load. What load? What services? What's this got to do with Palm Springs? We'll talk about Palm Springs in a minute, but first you've got to hear why I'm through being your pigeon. You're a very difficult character, my friend Harry. Very difficult. How many agencies right here in Los Angeles do you figure do a job for you? How many do you benefit by? None. Not a single solitary one. Forty-two, exactly. Forty-two. Right here where you live. Right here where you make your living. Yes. These people are real. Their dangers and distresses are real. And our responsibility is real. You know, the United Jewish Appeal asks us to give. But in a sense, we're not giving anything. We're using our money to buy a tremendous privilege. The privilege of not having to sit by helplessly and watch a disaster happening. The privilege of being able to stand on our feet and say, no, this inhumanity must stop. This suffering must stop. This must not be. And then being able to back our words with deeds. Well, you can help. Your support of the United Jewish Appeal has saved two million lives in 14 years, enabled more than 750,000 homeless men, women, and children to find a haven in Israel. Help turn Israel into a real home for them. Help Israel keep its gates open as a place of refuge. If Israel is to help the weak, then it must be strong. Because lives depend on us, support the United Jewish Appeal through your campaign in your community. When you support the United Jewish Appeal, you make it possible through the United Israel Appeal for the Jewish agency in Israel to go on with its work of absorbing the fresh masses of newcomers expected in the months ahead. You help the Joint Distribution Committee continue its work of sustaining life for 100,000 in Muslim lands and 30,000 in Europe and go on aiding the aged and handicapped in Israel. In that country, where nobody runs away, they're sure of one thing, that you won't run away either. So back them up now. Renew your contribution of the past year to your local campaign on behalf of the United Jewish Appeal. Give as much as you can, as soon as you can. Over and above that, give more, give generously. Give now, make this the year of life for millions who need your help. It won't be long now before Israel will be able to stand on her own feet. It won't be long now before she becomes strong and self-reliant. But it's always darkest before the dawn. And there are still dark days ahead for Israel. And we are the ones who must bring the sunrise. That's why it is so urgent that your community get all the cash it can now. That's why it is so important that every contributor pay up now. You felt pretty good when you gave. Take my word for it. You will feel a lot better when you can mark your 1950 pledge.
paid in full. When you pay in full, you help in full. And they said, let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. With your help, the good work of saving lives and building democracy can be continuing.